Well, thank you for joining uh, this talk on Enterprise Redis. My name is Lena Joshi. I run product marketing at Redis Labs. Uh, just a show of hands, how many here are familiar with Redis Labs? Everybody now? Awesome. And uh, does everyone know what is Enterprise Redis? You, oh, awesome. I got one guy. <laughs> OK, awesome. So I planned it that way, because uh, I'm going to start with what is Enterprise Redis and then talk about just a few things that we've introduced over the last few months. We've alluded to them uh, in, in, in our keynotes, but you know some of us might not have woken up that early or had a late night, so I'll just go through that again, and if you guys have questions, ask me. And then lastly, I will, I will talk about Redis Module Hub. OK, so first, uh, the word enterprise probably conjures up uh, Star Trek enterprise or <laughs> Or maybe USS Enterprise, which can give you a clue as to what I used to read while growing up. But really, what the word enterprise means is enterprise ready. So when, when you say enterprise Redis, what you're really expecting is infinite seamless scaling. You're expecting true high availability, the ability for red, your Redis layer to weather all storms. And lastly, a team of just complete experts at Redis backing it. Right? This, is, this is what we think means enterprise expectations. Anything I've missed? Cool. So this is what we do at Redis Labs. What we've, what we've done is we've enhanced the open source Redis. Um, the open source Redis is 100% supported, but we've wrapped it in a container-like structure. And we've added a zero latency proxy, a cluster manager, and a REST API outside the open source Redis. Now what this lets us do is it helps, uh, it helps us to scale Redis seamlessly without any downtime and without any disruption to your application. It also helps us provide true high availability. I'll explain how in a second. And of course, you have the, the team at Redis Labs backing it so you get the, get the enterprise support that you, that you need. So just a, just a second, just a second a look at what, what we've added. Let's say you're running, how many here are actually running open source Redis? Cool. And how many are running just a single instance of open source Redis? Okay, so, so you guys are running multiple instances of, open, of, of Redis and you want to scale it, you want to add instances. Redis is single threaded, single core. So even if you're running it on really large instances, it's only actually using one core in the machine. So what? The addition of the, uh, of the container-like structure that we've created does is it helps you create multiple instances of Redis, each one of which can utilize a single core on your machines. And we, you can do this via a UI, an API, a CLI. You can do this without any disruption or downtime. You can do it with no performance impact. So this makes it more efficient for you to run Redis. Uh, it also gives you uh, uh, an easy deployment mechanism for Redis. So where it would take you days, weeks to write the mechanism to deploy Redis, you can do this with, you know, uh, 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 with this pre-built uh, product. Make sense? The, the thing at the bottom, the odd number of nodes. So once you have, once you're, I'm presuming Redis is a critical layer for you guys. And in order to make sure that your data, uh, you have, wh what you might call it, uh, the right um, quorum to handle network splits, typically you will have three copies of your data. The way we do it, we spread the shards around in, uh, within a set of, uh, within an odd number of nodes so that you only need two copies of the data. So instead of having a master and two slaves, you only need a master and slave, and we take care of the network splits for you. Make sense? Um, so we have a shared nothing cluster architecture, and because we completely wrap the open source, we have 100% support for the open source commands. And moving from the open source to the enterprise Redis version is a single line CLI command. So it's no, no big deal to upgrade or anything like that. Um, this is the t technology that runs our Redis cloud. So it's available as a cloud service uh, that runs across all the four uh, major infrastructure as a service providers. And it is available as downloadable software. So this is the same technology that supports over 50,000 customers. Most of them are free, but there are 6,000 enterprise customers that are, that are running on Redis Cloud. Um, as you can see, the, the architecture allows you to run multiple multi-tenant Redis databases. 
and this is what we use to run Redis Cloud. So we have the uh, sort of operational expertise and uh, you know years of experience with doing this in a production environment. The same software that runs Redis Cloud is available for as a downloadable uh, software as well. So if you're running open source uh, Redis in your environment and you want to get the benefit of Enterprise Redis, you can simply download the software off of our website. It's called Redis Labs Enterprise Cluster. <coughs> Who thinks this is a sexy name? Awesome, Sharon. Thank you. Uh, however, it does connote that it is a real um, solid enterprise product. It has been available since early 2015. Now, even though it's been available since early 2015, since we've tried and tested it for years on Redis Cloud, it is, it is a much more durable product than you would think. Uh, we have over 100 plus enterprise customers already running this on premises, and managed versions of this are also available. Making sense so far? Cool. Um, so the main, main reasons you would, you would look at Enterprise Redis, uh, the first one is simple, seamless uh, clustering. So if you wanted to scale your Redis, create additional shards, create additional uh, slaves for your Redis instances, all of that you can do via UI, API, or CLI, again, without any disruption or downtime. If you're running open source Redis, let's say, on AWS, you, and if you wanted to scale it, you want to scale it up, you pretty much have to take a backup, create another instance, move all your data, change all the applications to point to this new instance, which means disruption and downtime. So you avoid all of that with uh, Enterprise Redis, whether you're, whether you're using Redis Cloud or Redis Labs Enterprise Cluster. The second thing is uh, our LEC is always on, highly available, and persistent. And we have done a benchmark. So I'll skip to the benchmark right here, and I'll come back. Oops, wrong version of slides. OK. So the benchmark basically shows that is, um, is a benchmark that we performed where we compared various providers of open source Redis and how long it took for them to uh, react to failures. And um, the benchmark shows that every other provider took over 10 minutes or 20 minutes. In some cases, they lost your data. And given, the, given where Redis plays in your infrastructure, we think this is a bad idea. Uh, Redis Labs Enterprise Cluster and Redis Cloud responded within six seconds. So we provide uh, basically all the features that you need for high availability in a Redis environment. We have also done performance optimizations. Now, since we introduced the proxy, that gives us a mechanism to do pipelining, to maintain persistent connections, and because of this, the Redis that we, that we run, the enterprise version, has a very predictable performance, uh, no matter what load you put on it. Make sense? Um, I'll talk about the operational cost savings in a second, but also uh, Redis Labs has the, has the maximum number of people contributing to Redis, and this is the expertise that is supporting the Redis. Um, so I'll skip through these slides since they basically cover the main points. No downtime while scaling. You get linear scalability. cross shard uh, operations are supported. Uh, through the UI, API, and CLI, we support auto sharding, shard rebalancing, shard migration, all of those things. Um, the high availability works across data centers, regions, and clouds. Uh, you get instant automatic failover. This is the benchmark. I'll show you the results in a second. Uh, you can also use uh, persistent Redis in this setup, and you get backups and disaster recovery as well. Um, has everyone seen the right-hand side benchmark so far, the NoSQL performance benchmark, where we took an application, a write-intensive application, benchmarked it against most of the other NoSQLs. The product used for that benchmark was Redis Labs' enterprise cluster. And we demonstrated some pretty high performance numbers in the benchmark. If you're not familiar with it, just shoot me an email. I can send it to you. As I mentioned before, because we allow the creation of multiple uh, Redis instances on the same server, your database is processed by multiple cores. So you get the higher compute power. And we have several built-in performance enhancement techniques as well. Uh, in terms of operational cost savings, so you get the benefit of better hardware utilization. You're maintaining one less copy of the data. You're reducing manual labor through the automation that's already included in the product. 
and you're shortening your time to deploy Redis by over 50%. So these are the sources of your savings. The one thing that I will talk about in the presentation is now how do you cut costs even further with flash memory? Lastly, you get enterprise class management and support. You get the UI, CLI, REST API based management and alerting. We have Redis specific metrics that we are monitoring over 20 of them. And you get a constant view of how, they, how they're doing. You can uh, set alerts to be notified when some of them are outside the bounds that, you, uh, that, that, that are okay with you. Um, and of course, you have the Redis expertise backing it. All right, so this is the benchmark I was talking about. Uh, this, uh, this benchmark uh, was basically uh, testing a few things. Uh, we, we use certain mechanisms to make Redis fail across a series of vendors. Uh, and we shall not name who is who, uh, <clears throat> because a lot of them are our partners. Um, and um, what we found is, uh, Redis, as I mentioned, Redis Labs recovers within five seconds. We do not lose any data. All the other vendors not only took over 10 minutes to recover, uh, to, uh, to recover, but also lost data, which is pretty damning, if you ask me. Questions on this benchmark? Fifty percent of the time, the data stored in Redis was lost. So we performed the experiment multiple times, and then fifty percent of those times, the data was lost. Some of the times, the keys were still there. So just to repeat, uh, because the session is being recorded, the question was, during those six seconds, do the writes fail? The answer was the, the writes are backed up, and they're buffered, and the customer has the option to either save the writes or move on, right? So the customers can recover their writes as well. Make sense? Thank you a lot. Um, so uh, in order to provide high availability for Redis, we think that your, whatever Redis you're using should have the following, uh, the capability to withstand the following failure events. It needs to withstand a process failure, a node failure, a multi-node failure, a network split, a zone rack failure, as well as the region cloud failure. And this is what we aim to provide with Redis Labs, both the cloud as well as the enterprise cluster. Cool. So now moving on to Redis on Flash. Anyone here using Flash memory? Yeah, like why would you do that? Why would you do that? Okay, so one of the things is, you know, we're still in the old world of thinking where analytics can come one month later after a batch process runs, and then we can ch change our recommendation engines to do new recommendations. This is really the old way of thinking, if you ask me. Uh, while you're thinking in this old way that you, can, you have plenty of time, actually time is running out, what you probably saw, you saw a bunch of, um, you saw a bunch of presentations this morning. You saw one by, done by the Databricks guys. And if that, that didn't inspire you, they're doing real-time analytics. They're doing analytics with real-time data, and they're changing the recommendations on a real-time level you're, you need to be running basically as fast as you can. So um, we started in 2005 where the, the term big data started to gain popularity, mostly because the tools became generally available to harness it. But we're fi we've kind of moved on. Batch insights are now, it's, it's accepted that batch insights will drive business, but really where you need to be is where real-time insights are driving automated decisions. And in order to do this, yes, your, your insights need to be instantaneous, which is why you use Redis, but also needs to be cost effective. So we think most of your processing, both op operational and analytics, is gradually going to move to memory-like speeds. But you cannot just dump everything in memory because of the cost. And this is where the technology shift is making it possible for you to run these types of analytics at memory-like speeds with low cost. Make sense? That's where Flash comes in. Um, Flash has been uh, much cheaper than DRAM, but also terribly slower. And now we're seeing advances in memory, 
NVMe memory, uh, uh, in particular, we recently did a benchmark with, where it is uh, slightly more expensive than flash, but only a little bit slower than DRAM. So what are the results with that kind of, I'm going to skip ahead to this, this slide. Um, the results are that you can get in-memory like performance, 2 million operations per second with sub-millisecond latency and greater than 1 gig disk bandwidth with a combination of RAM and flash. So how did we get here? So what we've done is uh, we've, we've, uh, with Redis Labs Enterprise Cluster, the downloadable product, we made it so that it runs on a combination of RAM and flash memory, where it recognizes flash memory generally as slower memory. And you can configure the ratio between how much data you want in your fast memory, which is RAM, and how much data you want in your slow memory, which could be flash, it could be 3D cross point, it could be uh, NVMe-based fla uh, flash, whatever you want. So the optimization we made was not, sim not just simply that we ported Redis over to Flash, but we made it so that it would access Flash in a manner that was optimal to Flash. We, uh, we, it's multi-threaded and async in its access of Flash, and we have the configurable ratio between RAM and Flash. Flash is not used as a persistent store, it's used as a RAM extender. Um, your, Key list is in RAM, your hot values are in RAM, and your cold values are in flash. And this is still 100% compatible with open source Redis. The configuration of the uh, RAM and flash ratio, which as we know is bound to be a little bit challenging, is still dynamic. And the results that you see are here. This is with an 80-20 uh, uh, flash to RAM ratio. So 20% in RAM, 80% in flash. So real life example. So clearly this is not the audience that is playing with uh, extremely fast analytics, but this is one example of a customer who was trying to do genome uh, data analysis in Redis. Um, this particular data set, if, if you were to ask me what they are trying to do, my guess would be that they're trying to detect some sort of pattern in our genetic code. And um, so their key sizes were 32 bytes, value sizes were 5 to 12 bytes, and they had a huge number of keys. They had 10 raised to 12, so giga, tera, something like that, keys. Um, so the raw data set size was very large, 31 terabytes of data. And what we did in order to... Uh, uh, to make this optimal is we encoded the keys and values so that we, com we could compress them further. Uh, and secondly, we used Redis hashes to make it so that performance would still be great while accessing these keys. And once we did that, we got it down to about a total of five, less than five terabytes, but just to give us some room, uh, we, we got it down to within five terabytes. And now you can see the comparison, the difference in cost. Were you to run this workload on RAM, 31 terabytes, we took an AWS instance, which was huge with the SSD back, which are SSD back, that would get, sorry, AWS instance, not SSD back, but just the large ones, this would get you to $2 million in annually, if you were to do this, in just memory. And then you run it with the i2 instances that are SSD backed, and you get to, and now we of course compress down the data, so it's not completely apples to apples, well, what you got down to is 50,000 annually. Even if you did the five terabytes on the EC2 instances, this would, this would still be a very large number. Make sense? Cool, so, so that, was, that was it about uh, Redis, and, uh, Redis and Flash. I will talk about Redis and Analytics how many of you were really at the keynote this morning? Really? There were a few. OK, OK. All right. So um, you saw a lot about how Redis and Spark work together. So I'll just give you a quick overview. Um, uh, Spark, as you know, is a, a data processing engine um, used largely in the big data space. And um, with, uh, with the integration that we've done with Spark, you can now use Redis as both a data source as well as a serving layer. And those were a couple of the demos you saw this morning. 
We also um, recently announced something where Spark was being used as an internal accelerator for Redis. Uh, so in addition to being a data source, uh, Redis was, used as an, was being used as an internal accelerator for Spark. So in addition to being available as a data source and as a data sync, the integration that we created allowed you to access the, the Redis data structures directly while doing your processing in Spark. Why would you want to do that? Anyone? All right, so um, we, we also published a paper maybe a couple months ago on Redis for time series data and using sorted set data structures in Redis to accelerate the processing of time series data. And in that paper, we, we basically showed that the sorted set structure really accelerates the processing of time series data by about 100 times compared to dumb key value stores, right? So how do we prove it? So we created this example time series data, stock prices for 1,024 stocks over 32 years, and we did a benchmark. We ran the same analysis in Spark without Redis, just Spark using proce in-process memory, Spark using Tachyon, which is the off-heap cache, and Spark using the Redis sorted set data, data structure to accelerate this processing. And you can see that with Redis, which is which are the little lines at the end, Redis was faster by up to 100 times compared to when Spark was using HDFS, and over 45 times when com compared to Tachyon or just Spark using in-process memory. So the big reason for why you would use Redis to accelerate Spark is for the acceleration is tremendous. Make sense? Questions so far? Cool. And lastly, um, we talked about modules quite a bit over the last couple of days. And um, why do we think, well, why are we all so excited about modules? Well, I am, I don't know about everybody else. The big reason is, well, we think it really extends Redis's use case coverage. If you were, first of all, data structures already make Redis pretty versatile. It can help you cover a wide variety of use cases. But with modules, now you can imagine Redis as not just the data structures you know, but additional data structures. I mean, what's stopping you from adding graph capability to Redis, from adding search capability to Redis, um, linear algebra to Redis, whatever you want to do to Redis, right? So when you think about all the range of use cases that you could potentially have, and why you would even think about choosing other databases, the modules that would be available with Redis would pretty much take away the pre-built notion, the pre-built data model notion away. Make sense? And then the, the reverse question would be, why would I use Redis for this, right? Why would I use Redis for graph? Why would I use Redis for my columnar store? Why would I use Redis for my JSON documents? Well, it's fast. You need fewer servers. You don't need to worry about multiple databases in your environment. You have fewer Few, fewer specialty data, databases to manage. So that's why you would do it. That's why we're excited. We're like, oh, Redis can be this big thing now versus just your uh, in-memory data structure store. Make sense? Yeah. Everyone excited about it now? Yeah. Cool. So really, what modules does is it turns Redis into a multi-model database. Uh, where we've been looking at the market as, oh, well, Redis is key value. Redis, is, can it really handle document data? Can it really handle uh, graph data, et cetera, et cetera? All those questions go away. Um, so we also announced that uh, Redis Module Hub will be available over the next few months. Timing is TBD. But what do we, what do we think this is? We think this is, uh, this is a marketplace for everyone. Every problem that a developer out there is solving with Redis, with the Redis module, now you can make that solution available to developers in the enterprise, right? Make it enterprise ready using Module Hub. It will also, we think it will also help developers monetize their work and reach enterprise customers. 
And lastly, for users of Enterprise Redis, it will give you guys the peace of mind before you deploy the modules. You know that there is a, a, an enterprise like yourself backing it, providing support for it, certifying that it's compliant with all the other Redis versions out there. That's what, that's what the function of Redis Module Hub is. Make sense? Cool. So um, we showed a little bit of this in the morning. Uh, it's already uh, up, www.redismodules.com. And you'll see that there are already some modules out there. Uh, the Redis Search module, the Image Processing module, Bloom Filter, etc. The Search module, which I think was developed in just the last two weeks, to be quite honest, is already the world's fastest text search engine. It's pretty awesome. It's 32 times faster than specialized search engines like Elasticsearch and Solar. This is what makes modules really, really powerful. What else, what other types of modules can, you, can there be? Just imagine them and they will be there, right? This is just a preliminary list. Uh, you, I mean, as you see, the list will go on and on. But there will be modules uh, on both the open source as well as module hub. And they will be certified for full compliance with open source Redis, as well as Redis Labs products, Redis, Redis Cloud, and Redis Labs Enterprise Cluster. And that was it.